Here's the truth, says Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's the truth. Now the consequences of that is twofold. One, no one comes to the Father except through me. And two, if you really knew me, you'd know my Father as well. And there's the problem for us. A problem that in that time, you might be tempted to think they didn't have. We live in this world with all these sort of religions going on around the place. And because of uh, communications, and because of travel, and because of immigration, we've got all sorts of different ways of viewing the world being shoved into our faces. And, and they are being shoved into our faces. That's where the problem arises in our society with this teaching of Jesus. We live in a multi-faith society. Now, <clears throat> the point is, the fact is, we do live in a plural society. We do live in a world where there are lots of other worldviews and opinions and religions out there, don't we? We do, that's the fact. But the fallacy that comes on the back of it is pluralism. We do live in a plural society where there are lots of other worldviews, lots of other faiths and lots of other opinions out there about the way to God. But the fallacy is pluralism, not plurality. Pluralism, pluralism says, they're all right. Plural acknowledges that there are different ones out there. So, living in a plural society, we acknowledge, yes, there are other people with other views and other opinions, but pluralism insists that we say, all roads lead to God. And that's the fallacy. It's believed that pluralism is necessary in a plural society, and it's not. Respect is. Respect and the ability to talk and to reason. We're living in a multi-faith society and the false solution to the problems that throws up is pluralism, where we're asked to approve the pragmatic position that it is not Jesus, but all roads that lead to God. And that leaves us in a world where people feel free to choose the religion that, that they want, as, 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 as they go around the supermarket and choose the breakfast cereal they want. A friend of mine from Bible College, you remember John Baxter Brown? <coughs> JBB is now working for a religious organisation, and he posted something recently on his Facebook. He posted this flowchart. Here you are. <coughs> flowchart for choosing your religion. And he did this with his tongue well in his cheek. <coughs> Let's have a look at it. How many gods do you want to worship? That's a very good starting question. Many people are saying none. Okay, so we go to the right hand side, we go down this, this branch here. Here are these options. None. <laughs> are you rich and insane? It says. Well, if yes, be a Scientologist, it says. If no, be an atheist. Those are your options, then, it says. It's joking. Go to the other extreme. Go across to the left-hand side of the chart. How many gods do you want to worship? A ton of them. Oh, good. Okay, next question. Then, do you want to be reincarnated? If no, follow the Mayan religion. If yes, well, there are more options. If yes, do you own a black cat? If the answer is yes, it says, be a Wiccan, that is, you know, magic black arts, right? Do you own a black cat? No. Okay. Well, do you prefer Indian takeout or Chinese? If you prefer Indian, it says, be a Hindu. If you prefer Chinese, be a Buddhist. Now, this is all very facetious, okay? Very facetious indeed, intended to be witty. But it's getting at the way people sort of feel they can just go out and choose a religion. Without any regard for truth claims, evidence, and so on. Because lots of people are in that position. I'm not saying people who haven't gone this way haven't got reasons for doing so, but I am saying, look, this is, the, this is a bit of a joke with the, the attitude that people have of choosing a god the way they choose breakfast cereal. How many gods do you want to worship? None? A ton of them? Only one? Ah, now here's an interesting one. If you want to, only want to worship one god, it says, how do you feel about bacon? If you say, nah, no. How do you feel about hummus? Nah, be a Jew. I love hummus, be a Muslim. Or if you say, I love bacon, and this is very interesting. I love bacon. Next question. Are you a naturally annoying person? If the answer is yes, do you think underwear can be magic? <laughs> if no, be a Jehovah's Witness. If yes, be a Mormon. Are you a naturally annoying person that wants to worship only one God? No, be a boring, generic Christian. 
Now, okay, it's a bit of a joke, it's a bit of a laugh, it's a bit of a spoof. It is a lot of a spoof, actually. But the point is this, people do actually work as if they think they can pick up a flowchart for choosing their religion and chase it through. That's the sort of outcome of living in a, a plural society. At one level, that's funny. At another level, if you wanted to choose a bus, you've driven into a strange city, and you've pulled up in the park and ride, because those are a good thing, aren't they? You've pulled up in the park and ride, and you've gone along to look for the right bus, and it gets confusing because you're in the wrong place. You've got a vague idea where you want to go. So you pick on a bus that's got a thing on the top of it that says something that might be right for where you want to go. Approach the bus, wait for the bus to turn up, solve the problem. Bus turns up, you jump on the conductor, uh, I'm trying to get to such and such. Is this the right bus? I see you pick any bus you like, mate. Doesn't matter. No, no, I want to go to Clapham. Oh, yeah, don't worry, all roads lead to Clapham, mate, don't worry. Just jump on the bus. Would you jump on the bus? No. You wouldn't want to jump on the bus. No, because okay, it doesn't make not. sense. And what he's saying sounds completely unreliable. But we're expected to trust our eternal destiny on a calculus like that. wouldn't happily jump onto that bus. But that's the problem being thrown at Christians by our secular multi-faith society. And when we make it our business to be getting somewhere and going somewhere specific, that society throws a problem on us. Because to go somewhere specific and definable and clear, there's a route to get there. And Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father, in case we were left in any doubt. No one comes to the Father except through me. Believe on the basis of the miracles themselves. There's evidenced support for what he's saying. What's he saying? He's saying there's only one way to the place of salvation and victory over death, to the place he's going, and that he is the way that can get you there. And secondly, he's saying this because of his great love. Because he doesn't want us missing the root. And it's the full extent of that love, which he says he's showing to us as he says this. And with all the love and care and respect that we want to have for anybody of any other position or any other view of the world, please don't ask us, to move away from believing what our Master says. That he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Because that wouldn't be very pluralist anyway.